Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my RPG series. In this episode, we will continue to build upon our XP component and we will be adding the functionality of leveling up. So let's start with opening that one up. So here is where, where we left it off uh, the last time. And what we want to do now is we want to have the ability to, when we accumulate enough experience, we want to have our character level up. Now, uh, the point where that makes the most sense is most likely directly after having awarded our XP. So let's actually create a function for this uh, to begin with. So we'll make a function and we'll say, try to level up. The reason we call it this is because we will call it all the time over here. So we can even start doing it right now. And this will handle whatever will happen if we actually do level up. So uh, in essence, this will be called all the time we have an XP change, but it doesn't always level us up. So inside of this, we will have our logic to determine if we are leveling up and what we will do about it. So um, to begin with, we want to have some sort of um, determination of have we reached enough experience points to level up? How do we determine that? We need to have some way of comparing our current XP level against some other value to see if we have leveled up or not. Now, this can be done in a multitude of ways, of course, but I think a good way to do this would be to have a curve so that we have that one driving whatever values we need to level up. What I mean with this is if we start off creating a variable and we call this, um, let's call it level curve and we'll make it of the type float curve. Uh, most of you should probably be aware of how this works. If you do not, I have a tutorial on curves so you can um, get more acquainted about that if you need to. Uh, I will leave a description in, uh, I will leave a link in the description as well. But essentially, if we have a level curve like we have now, we have a float curve here we can select, but we haven't actually created a curve. So going to our BP, uh, XP folder here, we can now right click and we can go and I do believe we find it on the miscellaneous. Yes, here, curve. And we choose a float curve and we can call this C for curve and then we can call it level or something like that. Opening this up, this is what we're presented with. Now, a curve is essentially uh, one axis that represents time and one axis that represents a value of something in accordance with that time. But it doesn't need to be that. You can have the axis be whatever you want them to be. In this case, we can actually do the following. We can consider the time axis, the one going left to right, to be our level. And we can consider our uh, vertical axis to be whatever experience points we need to reach that level. So, Assuming that we have a leveling system where we start at level one, then we would want to have a key over here at one. So now it ended up at one. If you don't get exactly 1.0 here, you can just fill that in. And then we'll have zero as our starting XP. So, so that's like makes sense, right? Next up, we have level two. So level two, we would create a, another key form. It ended up on two exactly. And then as a value, we can say maybe we need 150 XP. And now you can see that we get a very sharp uh, angle for this. Now, let's see, where is it? Is it uh, zoom to fit? That's not what I want. What you can do is if you hold down control and press A, I think it should mark all of them. Yes. So now when we zoom to fit, you'll see the whole curve essentially, which works to begin with. You can also scroll out and in with your mouse wheel to um, zoom in and out. 
In addition to the point at level two, we'll just create a curve for, let's say five levels, just so we have something. So at level three, we'll create another key. We'll say we need uh, 400 XP. And then after that, let's say we create one at level four. And we'll add a value of, let's say, 8,000. And then let's zoom out a little bit more, go to level five, which would be here, add a key. And for that one, we add the value 5,000. Now, control A to mark all the points and then zoom to fit. This is now our leveling curve. So we can now make use of and check against if we are at level one and then we check our experience and we can check have we reached this point of experience to, uh, or have we reached this point of experience? If we have, then we have essentially leveled up. So saving this, this is what we will be making use of for our XP. So in level curve here, we will now choose C level like so. Here we now want to have that logic being run, determining if we have leveled up. And then after that, if we have leveled up, we want to have a branch to determine if we have leveled up and act in it one way. And if we haven't leveled up, we're basically done here. So here we can add a return node immediately, actually. Return. So what do we do here? Well, we can create a function for this. So let's create the function and we can call it uh, level up question excuse me, <clears throat> question, level up question mark. And in this, we're gonna have a very simple amount of code actually. Uh, first, we're gonna check uh, based on our current level, if we have reached a max level. Now we made a curve for five levels. So let's create some variables for this. We can have one that says current level, which is the level that we will be using to inform the system what level we are. We will make it of a type integer. We will say that the default current value will always be one to begin with. We can say, we can create another variable for max level. So this is the level cap essentially of the game. And we can set that one to five. So it matches our current leveling curve. So we essentially want to do this. We get the current level. We want to check, is this current level the same as the max level? And if it is true, then we know we have reached max level. We're not interested in actually leveling up anymore. So we'll just hit a return. And we want to have a determination here if we have leveled up or not in the try to level up function. So what we'll do is we will add a return node, uh, a return parameter, and we'll call this uh, leveled up. And in this case, we are at max level, so we won't level up. So that's all good and fine. Other than that, we now want to make use of our level curve. So how do we do this? We have our current level, and we want to check if we have reached the cap for the next level. So we can add one to this, it means that we will be checking against the next level after the current level that we have. We can then take our level curve, like so, and we can say get float value since this is a float curve and our time interval that we're checking is actually our level so that's why we're hooking that up like that and it will be truncated and turned into an actually it won't be truncated it will be converted from an, uh, an integer to a float and this value we now want to compare against our current xp because our current xp is showing how much xp we have and we need to check and see if we have surpassed this amount so we check current xp greater or equal than whatever we're needing for the next level up and we check branch hook it up like so <clears throat> if it is true then we have determined that we are actually leveling up so we'll take our current level and we'll type in plus plus to increment it uh, with the macro so that will increase it with one and then we'll have a return node and we'll say we have leveled up. If it did not, then we have actually another return node here for false saying that we did not level up. 
Now going up back to our try to level up function, we can now use this function like so. Hook it up here. And we can now start writing code for our um, leveling up process essentially. So what do we want to do here? Well, <clears throat> one thing we for sure want to do is to check if we have gotten so much experience that we have leveled up multiple times. To first have some debugging to see if we actually do level up, we'll put in a print here saying that we leveled up. Like so. After that, we will make this recursive and recursive means we have a function that actually calls upon itself. So we will call on try to level up after this and then we will return. So this means <clears throat> if you're not familiar with recursiveness, that it will be called here, it will try to level up. If it did level up, it will print level up. Then it will call try to level up again, which will be going in here. Then it will try to level up again. If it is not able, for example, it will go through here, it will return. It will come back to where it was here last time and return here, and then it's done. However, if it came here, leveled up once, comes back to call it itself again, levels up again, it goes through the same procedure again, and essentially it digs itself deeper and deeper in levels of function calls until it doesn't level up anymore, and then it starts to return from all of the different layers. Using recursive functions can be very dangerous. It's very easy to uh, create something that's infinite. So you need to make sure that you have proper exit conditions, and it's, it is usually good to have some kind of fail safe in case you do something wrong, just to make sure you don't end up in an infinite loop or something like that. But yeah, so this is essentially our uh, level up code now done. We compile, we save. Going back to our event graph now, we can see that we have our function here, which we will be trying to level up with. And that should probably be all the functionality that we need right now. So let's put in some debugging information to see if this is actually working. We go to our third person character. We will add another event or input. We'll type in keyboard five and we'll say that we want to take the BBC XP and we will simulate that we will be getting experience points now here. So we will type in award XP, which is the function that is called whenever you try to give someone XP. And we'll type in a value of, let's say, 100. Going back to our third person character and going into full screen. And in the top left, right, top left right now, if I press the one, the five key right now, we get 100 XP and nothing happens because our first level up was at 150, I believe. So if pressing it again, we can see that we get a level up. And then I have to, they will get another level up and then the level ups will become less and less frequent because we had higher values between the different level ups the further we went uh, up. And now I think we have leveled up four times and we're actually at max level. Uh, we could actually check this and see, going to our third person character, XP, we can see that we're at 5600 experience right now. So the functionality seems to be working. So let's try out and see if our double or multiple level ups actually works. So we'll stop this and we'll make sure to go to our third person character and award enough experience points so that we will level up multiple times. So let's say we do a thousand. Compile, save, run, and full screen mode. And then we press five. You can see we leveled up three times. So that seems to work also. So the, the idea here is essentially that in this area here is where we would be handle whatever, handling whatever logic we need to handle when we level up. Now this depends uh, from game to game, of course. Uh, some games you maybe get some uh, flashy special effects of having leveled up. In other games you might have the game pause and have like a option of uh, talent choices or something like that appearing. Uh, and uh, for others it might just be like a notification being sent up and then you have to go to a character screen and then you can allocate resources or something like that. But yeah, so this is essentially where we would be handling all of the 
uh, communicating to the player that it has leveled up essentially. I think that's a good spot to stop for today. I hope to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.